Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today you may notice a new pipe, a different pipe, a very unique pipe, a pipe that I have never shown you before because I just got it. This is a tattoo pipe made by Tatsuo Tajima, and this was gifted to me by Chris Godok from TobaccoPipesJapan.com. He also sent me this snazzy shirt, as you can see here. Um, I'm not going to get too much into these on this Sunday smoke. I'm actually smoking a little bit of Dunhill Elizabethan in this pipe as well um, because I just recorded a video where I talked about the shirt, I talked about the pipe, I talk about TobaccoPipesJapan.com. Um, just a very cool gift from Chris and I was very happy to highlight his website and highlight this pipe because it's the very first Japanese pipe I've ever owned and I like it quite a bit. Some of you may know the name Tatsuo Tajima, some of you may know the name Tattoo Pipes, and if you do, you'll know that they are of excellent quality. <coughs> I'm not choking because I'm lying, I'm choking because I'm choking. Um, they're of excellent quality, great smokers, and this one, I had heard things about them. Well, I actually had never heard of Tattoo Pipes until I received this, but then on looking up information online, I heard rave reviews of these pipes. They go for quite a bit, they go very quickly. He only makes about 60 a year. Um, and this is number 31 of, I think, 2016, of the year 2016. So I feel very privileged to have one of these and I think it's really cool. So check out the video for this. This will be posting on Wednesday of this week. But that's not the only package we've received this week on Sunday Smoke or at the Stuff and Things Studios. This is definitely very cool, but I got another package from the OCD Piper. Ugh, let me reach. And I broke it open and then I didn't actually unwrap it totally. This is, came from Canada and the OCD Piper, I'm sure you'll recognize that name. He writes in quite a few questions on Twitter, a great contributor to Sunday Smoke and to Stuff and Things in general. But he said he sent me something and he requested on the packaging, he said, open on camera if possible. Nothing, what does that say? Nothing bad or creepy. I'm holding you to that, OCD Piper. So we have some nice uh, nondescript wrapping paper here. And I wanna open this up. Again, this came to my PO box. Um, I don't encourage people to send me things, but I gotta say, it gives me a lot of good content for the Sunday smoke, so it's, it's much appreciated. Um, so my P.O. box is in the About section of my YouTube channel if you ever want to send anything along. Again, nothing bad or creepy. No severed limbs, heads, things like that. I don't want it. But this, I'm quite interested to see what it is. It feels like a, a tobacco tin, so how exciting could that be? But we shall see, I guess. Oh. Oh, wow. I think this is a Murray's tin of Dunhill Elizabethan. I'm pretty sure. Um, and that's frickin' crazy. I don't see, it says, made in the UK in, associated with, in association with Dunhill Tobacco of London, manufactured under the authority of the trademark owner, rich flavorful blend of light and dark Virginia tobaccos with a touch of Louisiana Perique for added zest. And then on the back, it's distributed by Lane Limited, but I'm pretty sure this is an original Murray's tin of Dunhill Elizabethan. It feels like it has not been popped, like it hasn't leaked at all, so it still seems like it's vacuum sealed. There is a note inside. This is crazy. OCD Piper, thank you very much. Um, actually, your name is G, first initial. I don't know if I've actually gotten your name. Maybe we have, I can't remember if we've actually exchanged that information, but this is really cool. Let me see what the note says. <clears throat> hey Bradley, so with all of the Elizabethan comments about the match blends being based on the Murray's version, and that's why you don't like them, I thought we'd put it to the test. Most people who comment probably haven't tried it either. Well, here it is. Still sealed as when I sent it, hopefully. Uh, hopefully it passes customs on Settled on, I can't read that. A Canadian purchase tin from the late 90s or early 2000s. Enjoy, Jeff. Oh yeah, Jeff. 
I remember that. Jeff, the OCD Piper. So here we go. This is the original Murray's, and, and this is what's so cool. I'm definitely keeping this tin, and maybe I can clean up. There's a little residue from a sticker on there, but this, these are the original painted tins as opposed to just the stick-on labels. So this is so cool to have. And obviously this is gonna have a lot of age on it because they don't make this anymore. This was from, the, like you said, the late 90s, early 2000s, so it's got at least 20 years on it. Um, so that is prime Virginia blend aging. 20 years. So I'm not gonna be able to say, sorry, I don't know what that noise was. I'm not gonna be able to say like, oh, okay, this is what the Murray's blends tasted like or the Murray's version of Elizabethan because this is a 20 year aged version. And a lot of blends, if I took this blend or this version of Elizabethan that was produced by STG, I don't know when this was, there is a date code on here, but I can't remember it off the top of my head, probably with a couple years ago, um, a year or two ago. If I took this and aged it 20 years, it would probably taste quite a bit different than it does now when it's fresher. But this will still give me a good idea of that Murray's blend. And I am very curious to know whether that original Murray's blend, would I like it better than this STG version? There are a lot of people who swear by this original Murray's. Let's just put these tins side by side so you can see the difference. Very similar, but obviously the Murray's tin. I'm assuming this has probably faded a little bit. It was probably more yellow, but this might have had some sun exposure and stuff like that. But that is just so cool. Thank you so much, Jeff. That is such a cool package. I, I knew that it was just a tin of tobacco, and I was wondering what could it be? Because um, he said it was a very special gift, and yes, this is a very special gift. That is so cool. So cool. So obviously this is going to be an upcoming video. At some point we're going to be talking about this Murray's version. I don't know if I'm going to compare it to any of the match blends. I don't, I don't remember if I have any left of any of those, but maybe my memory of those blends will be close enough that I can determine if this tastes like any of those. And then I'll obviously, since I have quite a few tins of these, thanks to our good friend, Mike, we can compare it to the STG version, but that's exciting. So cool. Thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah, I'm really liking this pipe, but that's enough good things. Too many crazy good things going on on the Stuff and Things channel. Um, I should briefly mention we are continuing to play Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice on Stuff and Things Plays. Four videos posting every week on the Stuff and Things Plays channel, so please tune in for those. But now, it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question you would like me to answer it on the show, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer your question. And also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can message me, you can leave comments, you can leave, I guess, posts on Patreon, and I will try to include those, or I will do my damnedest to include, the, include those in the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things section of each show. Um, I have some doubles, some doubles, some repeat questions, but I figure not everyone has watched the show from the beginning and it's okay to re-answer some questions that I've been asked before. But let's jump in first from Patreon, CC Ward posted under the heading revisit. He says, in the voice of your choosing, Bradley, <clears throat> I'll just use the Bradley voice. Here's a few revisit recommendations for what it's worth. Presbyterian, squadron leader, Orlick Golden Sliced, Jackknife Plug, Ready Rubbed, I don't know which Ready Rubbed that is. Uh, there are several different Ready Rubbed, or Plug. Also, if you have room in your rotation, I'd like to see a review on C&D Super Balkan. It's become my everyday smoke recently, and I'd like to get your take on it. Thanks for the great videos. Thank you, CC Ward, for being a supporter on Patreon, and thank you for your suggestions. Next, we have questions from Twitter, from Lambda underscore Loser with a U, at Lambda Loser, he says, or she says, I think it would be interesting to hear you interview Peter Straub about the craft of writing and other stuff and things. Also, thanks for suggesting Gene Wolfe, the shadow of the torturer was much enjoyed, and I look forward to the rest. Thank you, Lambda Loser. Um, that's an interesting idea. I'm actually speaking to Peter Straub tomorrow, and because uh, he is a maniac tier supporter on Patreon. So I might run that by him. That might be something. That's something. And I'm glad you appreciated and enjoyed Shadow of the Torturer. Gene Wolfe is great. He unfortunately died recently, but he is an amazing author or was an amazing author. Next, we have Eric. Am I recording? Yes. We have Eric Furman, at Eric Furman. He says, 
Hey Bradley, I would like to hear your thoughts on at underscore country squire shepherd's pie English blend. If I send you a small jar, would you give your impressions? Um, Eric, I appreciate that very much. I have a P.O. box if people want to send me things, but I don't want to say like, oh, I don't want to get into this thing where people say, hey, I'm going to send you this blend. Will you review it? Because then it will be people picking the blends that I review as opposed to me picking the blends that I review, which I know maybe seems like a weird distinction, but there are so many people who ask me to record to review blends all the time. And if I set this precedent of like, oh, just send me the blend and I'll review it for you. eh. I mean, I might make exceptions for that every once in a while, but I don't know that I want to get into that, but I do appreciate the thought, Eric. Next, we have a question from Tyler. Is this the same, because it's at Tyler Brewbaker 20, but we've had Tyler Brew Brew in the past. Is this the same person? I'm not sure. Tyler says, uh, are they asking for a voice? I don't think so. Um, I know you said in past videos that burly blends have a sort of ciggy room note, cigaretti. Would you say dark fire blends are the same since they are burly tobaccos, only dark fired? No, uh, dark fired burly blends or dark fire Kentucky, they have a really barbecuey kind of smoky spicy smell. Not very similar to cigarettes in my opinion. Quite distinct actually. Next, we have a question from Ding, Dean Kingsland at DM Kingsland. Dean says, Love your pipe and pipe tobacco videos, but what is the name of the theme song you use? Oh, I've almost gotten to like a George Mason kind of voice there. But what is the name of the theme song you use for the tobacco reviews? And can I get a copy somewhere? So this is a repeat question that we've gotten many times. The name of the song is Radio. It is a song that I did in a previous band of mine, a song I wrote years ago, and it is not available anywhere. But thank you for asking. Next, we have Baxter Van West at Baxter underscore plus underscore egg. Baxter says, <clears throat> Yeah, recently I've been smoking a lot of Captain Earl's Night Watch. For me, I would consider it an all-day English with simultaneously, while simultaneously being a full-flavored smoke. I'd be interested to know, when do you plan on reviewing your Captain Earl's blend? Um, do I have a Captain Earl's blend? Did someone send me Captain Earl's and I totally forgot about it? I'll have to check in on that. <laughs> Maybe I'm totally blanking on this. We'll see. Uh, next, we have Adam at Sports and Pipes. Adam says, Maybe you could search Twitter for your Sunday Smoke hashtag and generate random numbers for a potential giveaway. Just a thought. Also, shout out to Kevin. That was incredibly generous. Is he okay with the potential giveaway? So, Adam is reminding me of the fact that last week I mentioned when I did that crazy box opening that I was going to get some sort of giveaway going and I still haven't decided, so I appreciate the suggestion here, how I wanna do that. Cause I was thinking maybe I'll do it as a Patreon thing, but now I don't know if I wanna limit it only to Patreon subscribers. Maybe I'll do it as a Twitter thing, but then I know there are a lot of people on tw who don't have Twitter who watch on YouTube. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do it more as a YouTube thing, but I don't wanna do it as a, oh, if I get this many subscribers on this day, whatever, whatever. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a little video, not this week, but the week after, where I have several little like goodie packs that I make up out of some of the things that I've gotten. And what we'll do is on that video, anyone who comments on that video will be entered, and then I will randomly select one of those people, or probably two. I think I'm gonna have two little packages for people. So uh, I will pick two people at random from the commenters on that video, not this video. It will be a specific giveaway video and then those will be the winners. So look for that coming up in the next couple weeks. But thank you for the suge suggestion, Adam. Next we have Eddie Guerrero, who asked for a mob boss voice, which I kind of almost did, but I'm not sure if you talked about this before. My apology if you have, but do you have to go to whiskey bourbon, but do you have a go-to whiskey bourbon you enjoy drinking? Not really. I don't really drink much at all, um, and I don't really like alcohol that much. I drink sometimes and there were times in my life when I'd go out a lot and drink, but um, not really. I don't, eh, I've got like some Jameson that I drink sometimes. It's all right. Uh, I like whiskey Dr. Pepper sometimes, but I don't really, I'm not a connoisseur of whiskey or bourbon, I'm afraid. Next we have Janko Adamek 
at Janko1997. He says, will you do a cleaning video on your Savinelli Corallo di Mare? I would love to see that. Love your content. I've been just repeating voices like crazy here. Um, that's an interesting question. My Savinelli Corallo di Mare is a beautiful virgin uh, rusticated pipe, but it has colored like crazy since I've had it. And I don't know that I would want to get rid of that color. I could, because there's no actual finish on the pipe, I could use alcohol to clean the pipe and probably get it looking brand new again. But I don't think I'd want to do that. I like the coloration that it has. Uh, it could definitely use some cleaning on the stem though. So that is something we may do in the future. Uh, I believe this is the last question from John Kratzky. Kratzky? At John underscore Kratzky. He says, <clears throat> uh, I know you're into Nintendo things, but have you considered playing Sonic Mania Plus for the Switch? It's really good. I actually have purchased Sonic Mania and I tried to play it and I don't know if it's just me, but when I was a little kid and, well, not even that little, but when I was a kid and I had a Super Nintendo, I had like one friend, I think, who had a Sega Genesis. And I remember going over to their house and thinking that it was lame and them trying to impress me with it by showing me Sonic and me trying to play Sonic and not understanding why it existed. Like, I didn't like it then. I thought it was like this knockoff, like, uh, it's not like Nintendo's name brand and Sega's like, and it's just that weird thing you have as a kid because I didn't really know anyone who had Sega stuff. And I was like, oh, this is the weird console. And I still don't really get the appeal of Sonic, the gameplay. Like, eh, I don't know, but I might try Sonic Mania again because so many people seem to love it and maybe it'll click for me. I'm not sure. But gang, we've been going a while. It's time for the very best part of the Sunday Smoke. And that's the part every week where we thank our Patreon subscribers, those who have supported the channels at $25 or more a month. And those people are winners. They are heroes and they are who make the shows go. People like Glenn with two N's. Thank you so much, Glenn, for being a Patreon supporter at $25 a month. Also, Kevin Moore. Thank you, Kevin, so, so much for being a supporter at $25. Derek, thank you, Derek, for being a Patreon $25 supporter. Cody Striegler, could do it without you, Cody. We love you, man. Thank you very much. Nathaniel Hills is also a $25 a month Patreon supporter. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. Kirk Crompton. Private Eye is also a $25 supporter on Patreon. Thank you, Kirk. C.W. Piperman, you are the reason for the show being successful. You personally, and only you, C.W. Piperman. Also, Garrett. Thank you, Garrett, for supporting the channels at $25 a month on Patreon. Thank you very much, Garrett. We would also like to thank the maniacs, the crazy people, the wild men and or women, no women yet, but maybe someday we will have women, uh, who support the channel at $100 a month. That's crazy. People like Peter Straub. Thank you so much, Peter. Like I said, we are having a conversation tomorrow because that is the perk of supporting the channel at $100 a month. You get to talk to me. Uh, we would also like to thank Bob McGee. Thank you so much, Bob. We love you. We couldn't do it without you you are a maniac. And if you would like to be a maniac or any other kind of supporter on Patreon, there's a link in the description box below. But remember, you don't have to do it. We love you just watching, commenting, being involved. That's what it's all about. But gang, I've been talking my face off. Haven't been smoking my cool new tattoo pipe. I want to finish this bowl. I'm going to edit some episodes. I'm going to post some things so you will have some things to watch. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff of Things Out of Blood Study Smoke. I'll see you later.